Good morning, my YouTube friends. This is Major from Major Honey. Got another uh, video for you today, coming from the beautiful back country of North Carolina. And I'm going to uh, do a routine inspection. It's August the 10th. About a month ago, I came through and pulled honey. And there was some frames that was almost capped. I'm gonna check them frames and pull them. May have a super full of honey. But I'm gonna work on that today. Pull some honey and uh, make sure the queen's got enough room to lay winter brood. we're in early August so you got to think about how many brood cycles you got left and you want to make sure that she's your queen's got room to, to lay so you got a good in my area you got a good three or four brood cycles before before um, before it starts getting cold weather so this box is healthy look at the bees and that also tells me too that there's not really anything for them to to go get right now the goldenrod has not bloomed here yet but it'll be coming soon I will, I will, after I pull the honey, I'm going to uh, feed them a little bit. I'm not going to feed them today. I didn't bring any, but I'm going to uh, come back at a later date and come back in the next few days and feed them because uh, they're going to need it to feed the babies. As you can see, they look they look healthy. You can look at a bee and see if it looks healthy or not. They're gonna look normal. If you got any, you can tell if you got any wing issues or anything like that. Due to mites or anything like that, so. They look pretty good. Let's look at this super and see what we got. I'm not smoking them real hard. I'm just putting some, a little bit of smoke down and each line here because I want to probably going to be I'm going to be pulling this off so I want them to go ahead and go on down to the bottom See they this one's ready. It's about like it was the last time I seen it. They had pretty much done all they're gonna do on this frame. They didn't pull this out of here at the top, but that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I've got a super here behind us and in a Tupperware box. 
So what I do is I take them out. I take them out of the super and then I stick them in the super that's in the Tupperware box here. I'll show it to you. All right. And then what I'll do is I'll brush these, the rest of these bees off and then I'll set it in there and then I'll put my lid on it. Just makes, to me, it makes it a little bit easier to keep the bees off of it until you can get it all done. Got a couple of stragglers on there, but it's okay. You see that little, see that little tear mark right there? I just seen a bee do that. Tore it open to try to steal the honey because they knew I was taking it. <coughs> they didn't want me to get it. And then when I stick it down in my Tupperware box, put the lid on it. They can't get back to it. Good looking frame. There. It don't hurt the bees to shake them off no further than they are, but you can shake them off, makes it a little faster. I'll just shake them on the top of the frames, they'll go on about their business. I'm not going to bore you with this. They're all the same, same concept. I'm going to stop there, and I'll come back in a bit when uh, I've got this super off, and I'm going to go down in the lower box and see if they got any deep frames I can pull. Okay, well, we're back. I went through the top box, some honey and stuff in there, typical stuff. I'm going in the bottom box. You can tell that uh, they're not very happy that I'm here. 
see these bees are different than the ones that because uh, I don't give these quite as much attention as I do my bees that at my home so I can tell when I come to work in them they're just not used to being bothered so uh, they make a little bit bigger deal about it frame here just mainly got pollen in it. I'm really only going to go in just to make sure that I'm queen right. Got brood here with a bee coming out. But there's a bee coming out right now. Yep. pretty much uh, tell there's not been much of a flow lately because there's not a lot of honey around the brood. Not on that outside frame anyway. This frame's completely full. Pollen. switch that out with uh, a frame in the top they can still get to the pollen but I want to have there's no room for her to lay eggs because the whole frames full of pollen so I'll move a new frame down and give her room to lay I'm starting to get a little worried because all I was seeing was brood but here on this frame there's some opening uh, larva here some young larva so
still has uh, some young larvae there in the corner at the bottom there. But uh, still a lot of pollen in here. there's only a little bit of young larva typically you wouldn't do this but being that there's a small amount I'm gonna move it up the rest of its cat brood and pollen but it'll be a while before I you know do and do any more inspection so I want to make sure that I take care of everything right now to make sure she's got plenty of room Still have not seen eggs yet, so most of the frames either had cat brood on them, but they was full of pollen. Wasn't nowhere else for it to lay. Same here. Firm this in the sun. Okay, yay. I have, there is eggs and larvae here in the corner. Very young larvae. Got majority of this frame, so I'm satisfied that I'm queen, right? Not necessarily for me to necessary for me to find a queen. Now I'm going to put the new frames that I put in in between the frames that are already pulled out. And that helps a couple ways. They'll, they'll pull it out. And it helps them keep it straight. If you get... If you put two brand new foundation frames side by side a lot of times it will cause them to to cross comb it but if you put one that's already pulled completely out and looking good then they'll emulate that in the frame beside of it
smoke them a little bit around the edges because I'm gonna set this box back on. I don't want to squish no more bees than I have to. But you can put it on sideways like that and lift up gently and then just slide it over and it will push a lot of the bees out of the way. And you will kill a lot less that way. A lot of them fell off on the ground. Now, I feel good. I got um, seven frames capped, medium frames. There's one in there that's not completely capped. I'll just, that'll be it for this year, and I'll just leave that. And we'll put back new frames for now as holding spots. And um, if I don't make, uh, I'm probably going to make cone honey out of this super. It was. Uh, homemade foundation that we make and uh, nice and clean and refined and uh, so I'll probably make uh, cone honey with it if I decide not to I'll bring those back and after I've extracted them and put them back in here but for now I'm gonna put these new frames in here and then uh, that'll be a holding place or they'll go ahead and work on it i'll come back in a few days and give them a some food to help them pull some wax and to uh, get ready for the winter time i have added moved around and manipulated a few frames in the brood box to where it will give uh, the queen somewhere to lay some more eggs she had a couple frames with eggs on it i really want more than that because um, i want to try to get as many winter bees as possible so it's important this time of year for you to do complete deep inspections through your box and manipulate your frames as you find necessary to meet your goal. You know, as far as, you know, you want the more bees you got going in the winter, the with treatment for varroa mite, you will have the best success to winter your bees. And, uh, and you'll give them a fair chance of making it. You know, actually above average, really, if you'll maintain your treatment for a varroa mite, make sure you got plenty of room for the queen to lay. Take your honey from them. And, uh, and if you're not going to, if you're not planning on taking the time to feed them, leave the honey in there. But move the honey up. Like this is a double eight frame with a super, okay? Make sure that you pull any honey in your bottom box that if you've got full, frame, full frames of capped honey, move that to your second box. And to make sure the brew chamber has room to lay, you know, she has room to lay eggs and then they ha they'll have honey above the brood, just like a typical brood pattern, they'll have honey on top of the frame. But you don't want any full frames of honey in the bottom box because they won't, they won't use that right now. They need the, the honey and the pollen to feed the babies. So you want to try to keep everything close together there when they have a lot of pollen like this one did sometimes i will take a, a frame of the pollen completely out if they've got so many and then put in a new frame because bees always bring in more pollen than they really need so 
but if you've got plenty of room you can move the pollen up like I did they will still be able to get to it they will even move it if they want to if they need to but they can still get to it to feed the babies to have a long bench here to, to work on. I can lay all the frames and stuff out here on the bench in between these two hives. And I'm not bending up and down off the ground or anything like that. I have a little folding table that sometimes I'll bring if, if I need it. And I use it at the house a lot. But here I've got quite a bit of bench space to where I don't have to worry about that as much. So. You know, sometimes you might worry about bees that fall on the ground. This particular stand is really good for that. A lot of times, like I have a board laying there, I will take the board and lay it on the ground. And so they'll have something to climb up to. But this one, see, there's some here laying on the, the front, but uh, on the ground. See, they're crawling up the leg and uh, going back in. So. There's not a whole lot for them to do right now, so we got quite a few laying out. Plus, we're getting away from the smoke as well. So there was several that fell off right here, but they're about, there's a few of them left, but they're already crawled up towards the front. in the feeder while I had it sitting there on the bench and we'll smoke them out because once I put the lid on it they won't be able to get out so Now, it's important that, you know, I took that honey from them, which is fine because I'm going to feed them and they're going to, and I gave them some new foundation. So it's important that you do feed them. And then the goldenrod will be in pretty soon, but I'm going to, you know, I need to give them feed at least one time, just something to keep them busy until the goldenrod comes. A lot of times if there's nothing going on, They, um, they'll just sort of sit around kind of thing. They, But if there's some kind of food, then it makes them productive, right? And you want them to be productive as much as possible, obviously. But uh, like I said, I'll come back in a few days and give them some food. So. I'm going to move to this other box here the side of us here and we'll, we'll see what's going on with them real quick Thank you. 
pipe beetle. One. I didn't see any in the other. But one is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> Actually, you know, you can have several and it'd be fine. guys haven't done a whole lot since you know they've pulled pulled that out that far and went ahead and capped it filled it full of hung and capped it yeah. so they may or may not even do anything else with the rest of the frame same thing on this one, which I mean that, that's okay I mean this honey will probably be left in here for them to eat for the winter but they're just doing it as fast as they can kind of thing so they're filling it up as they're pulling it out and I already got a nice chunk capped on this side as well but that's perfectly fine I mean it don't Everything don't have to be. Ooh, I had my board butt fell off and got me there. <laughs> Everything don't have to be. Everything don't have to be perfect all the time, you know. So. Yeah, I flip my smoker off in the front, and I'm not gonna edit that out. I'm gonna let y'all let y'all have that. <laughs> Maybe someone will find it entertaining. I don't know. The guy that about got knocked out by a smoker. A lot of honey in this frame. You can see they pulled it out a lot further. Got a lot of it capped. On both sides there. Looks like that whole, this whole top box is pretty much like that. Yeah, both of these other ones are like that. I'm gonna take my Smurf box off here because part of this inspection too, also is I need to make sure I'm clean right really tough time of the year to have a box without a queen you know when I like using these hive tools better you know to me they're easier you know and it's hard to get out your first frame so what you do is you just break it loose from your other frame all right you stick your hook down in it and then rotate it back and it has a little lip for it to sit on there. And then you can pry it up because it sits on the other frame. Pry it up, get it with your fingers here, and then do the same thing over here, pry it up, and then it'll let loose. And then you can leave your hook on that side, gently pull it up the way I do it. And then I take the corner, gently lay it there, and then I, so I can get it with my fingers. And then I can hold it and flip it around where I can look. This frame, this side of it's completely capped with honey. And this side they're working on it as well. It's capped all but they've got nectar, almost honey in here and then there's a bunch of pollen right here. So they're finishing that off. take that first frame out I, I have a bench to set it on but if you've got a frame hanger that's fine and when you put it on there then when you do the next one all you have to do is 
break it loose from your the next frame and then just pull it pull it right out. Huh. Got a lot of I didn't have to go far to check this one. Look at all that brood. Young larva and eggs, all in one frame. Brood, and then look up, up the brood up in here. You'll see the eggs and the larva. Right here, looks like a drone. I don't know if he's alive or dead see its head right there now on the other side of the frame it's got a few eggs in it but it's majority pollen and see all your it's the cool thing about pollen can see all the different colors of pollen. So that's a good looking frame. Got quite a bit of honey across the top. That's a traditional frame there. You can see your football pattern top that they call it. And see all your honey across the top. And you see your the football shaped it. brood pattern there, the larva and brood. Now, really I could quit right there if I wanted to. I just want to look the whole that whole five frame right here is nothing but honey so they're already packing it away for the winter and I might just leave it for them because this box is going to stay in this three frame box all winter long and it will winter in it nicely Here's another frame with uh, eggs on it, larva, and brood. You can see these emergency queen cups. There's like three of them right here. There's, there's nothing in them, but uh, they always have those for emergencies. So if you look down in them and there's nothing in them, then no worries. You know, just leave them alone. Because they do that on purpose because, see, like this frame right here has got a lot of eggs in it. A lot of eggs. So what if for some strange reason something happened to the queen, they'd go pull one of these eggs and put it in that queen cup and it'd already be half made and then they could start finish pulling it out and feeding royal jelly and it would get them started faster on, on making another queen. This is the second box. And the queen is laying very strong in this second box here. Now, these are queens that I raise myself. I let the bees raise them, I should say, really. This was a split this year. Look at that brood pattern. Now, this was from a queen that was made by the bees, okay? Eggs that I took from another hive, they pulled the queen, they pulled and made themselves a queen. 
she hatched, made it, and look at that brood pattern. The bees know how to raise queens just as good or, you know, better than any human can raise them. Now, of course, that's my opinion. And I'm sure there's people, other people that don't think think as much, but but look at this side. She has laid so many eggs. There's hardly not enough room at the top for the for the honey. She look. All that brood. So I am going to put this box back together. And I'm gonna put the I'm just gonna I'm gonna put that honey back on and I'm gonna let them have it. I'm not gonna be too greedy with this one especially because they got a lot of bees in here getting ready to to hatch out, so I want to make sure they got room, and I want to make sure they got honey to make it through the winter. More than likely, I'm not going to go in the other box, but more than likely, the bottom box is just as heavy as with brood. As this box is so and I want to make sure that they keep putting the honey up here in this top box because I want to that way it'll continue to give her plenty of room so this particular box I didn't have to manipulate any frames which is nice and you know, you're not always going to have to do that, but you never know unless you look. You have to inspect to know that, so it's really tough to not look at your bees, and then, I mean, it's really, it's impossible to know what's going on in your hive unless you start pulling frames out and looking. I mean, you can't just open the top of it. look down in there and say, yeah, wow, there's a lot of bees in there. They're doing good. That's not the way it works. And if you think that's the way it works, I apologize if I offend you, but I don't care who you are. You cannot know the status of your hive by just looking down in the top of it and thinking that they're okay just because there's a lot of bees in the top box. You, you know, you may get lucky. But I have seen hives this year that you open the top box, say it'd be a two, five frame like this, and you open, there's a lot of bees in there, you see brood, you see eggs, wow. Um, queen's doing good. Then you go into the bottom box and it has small hive beetle larvae in it, and they've just moved up to the second box to get away from them. But the whole bottom box be eat up with small hive beetles. And you'd never know that unless you look. I looked all the way through this one three weeks ago. So I didn't have to go into the bottom on this one. I went all the way to the bottom in this eight frame beside of it here. And then I'm going to do this on the ones that I didn't do last time. I will do this time. It's, it's hard to do them all on a visit, so I usually just break them up. So, but today's inspection was more about making sure I was still queen right for being this late in the year and pulling any excess honey. So that's what we've done on these two hives here. I am uh, going to stop the video here. And uh, I appreciate everyone watching. And like and subscribe.